here from the Museum in Copenhagen. Um, I'll start with some apologies. I have no cool videos of underwater archaeology or ballistic tests or anything like that, so I hope that's okay. Also, my concept in this paper of early modern might be stretching it a little bit. A lot of materials a bit earlier than that. Okay. So, the construction of a second metro line around Copenhagen over the past seven years has allowed us to carry out some large excavations on the edge of the medieval and post-medieval urban area. <coughs> um, in particular, excavations have come with new tour by the eastern fortifications, Gammelstrand, the former harbour, and Wallisplatzen by the western fortifications have provided much new evidence for the earlier limits of the town of Copenhagen, and it's the latter site that I'll talk about here. Prior to the recent excavations, relatively little was known with certainty about the city's older western boundary. Knowledge came from cartographic sources and historical references, as well as present-day street layout. But the first map was drawn in the 1590s, and the first references for this area date to the later 1300s, when the western gate was first mentioned. So one of our aims was to confirm or reject existing ideas about the city's border to the west, if we could. It is believed that the later medieval western boundary of Copenhagen followed approximately the line of present-day Vester Volga, a western rampart street, with the medieval western gate placed outside of present-day Vestergela. And you can see those streets here. So this is where we believe the medieval mode should be. And this is the main street from the west. Um, <clears throat> Previous fieldwork, including some larger excavations in the 1940s, appeared to support the general ideas about this, but there was little evidence for precise dating. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I never said that. Didn't I? Uh, previous fieldwork, yeah, no, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just getting lost. Yeah, so there's an aerial view of the same thing. This is the street sweeping up here. West of all, again, the Western Rampart Street. And this is Royal Platon, where we're busy making a big mess. Um, some interpretations suggest that this area where we were working lay entirely outside the town as it was first defined in around the 1100s. Older excavations apparently support the idea of a relatively small horseshoe shaped enclosure further to the east, closer to the sea, as defining the area of the town. But these dates were carried out as much as 100 years ago, and they are not thoroughly documented. It has been assumed that the high medieval defences were probably established in the later 1200s to so allow the town to expand. Just some uh, details of the people and some numbers here. Very exciting. Um, and there's some facts. So, yeah, there's some of the main. I've changed this a little because of time, so I'm going to skip through. This is the oldest map from the 1590s. And from this, and from some references, we know that a second gate was added in the uh, 16th century on a roundel or rather than to the west side. So this is the area I'm dealing with here. <clears throat> Improvements were apparently carried out on the defences again in the 1580s, while Christian IV, as we've heard, had uh, more modernization going on in the early 1600s. Finally, following the Swedish siege in the 1650s, the Western fortifications were once again completely rebuilt. So that's a very brief synopsis of some of what we, what we know. Excavations in the 1940s revealed parts of some structures in the area that we were working in, including part of a bridge and a water mill. But again, any kind of concrete dating evidence wasn't really there. <laughs> This is the map from 1624. This one I haven't turned the right way around, so this is the west over okay. here. <clears throat> Our recent excavations produced a lot of evidence relating to the former defences and have helped us to clarify the picture, we think, in relation to both the form the defences took and the dating of the various changes that have been made. So during our excavation, we saw a medieval moat for a distance of about 44 metres, and it measured 22 metres in width 
and five and a half meters in depth, so pretty serious. It was deep enough to reach the water table, and it's also possible that the seed extended up the moat as far as where we were working. So the base of the moat was definitely wet. The rampart only survived in small fragments, so we can't say much about its form other than it seems to be made of clay. It was placed on top of former urban activity areas, sealing over former road surfaces, pits, and areas where structures had previously stood. So when the fortifications were established, the town was rearranged to some degree, and former urban space was taken out of use. So in fact, much pre moat activity was observed outside where the moat was placed. So in fact, the town was, as I put it, pulled back in when this fortification was made. Um, at the base of the moat, a rich foundation built of oak timbers was encountered. Uh, this is a drawing from the 40s, sorry, that's rich. That's an aerial view of one of our trenches with the moat backfills exposed. That's sort of a, we have none of the edge of the moat in that picture, that's how big it is. It's quite substantial. And this is a rough layout of what we observed. Um, at the base of the moat, a bridge foundation built of oak timbers was encountered just outside the present day Lester Gala, Western Street. It consisted of huge timber piles driven deep into the clay at the base of the moat, onto which were jointed a series of massive horizontal oak beams. Dindro chronology has dated this bridge to 1372 or just after. As no further structures were seen to predate this, it seems that the first bridge was constructed in about 1372 and hence the moat and rampart were also likely to have been established at about that time. This dating was backed up following, following the final phase of work early this year, when we got to dig a small area of intact medieval moat hills, which we took samples from and got three dates in the 14th century, from the very base of the moat, so that's pretty nice. <clears throat> On the city side of the moat, a stone foundation, which I've put in here, medieval gateway, was discovered. Um, this measured nine by nine meters and was directly in line with the street cluster hill. The foundations were 1.6 meters deep and comprised of their laid stones set in clay and sand. Given the depth of the foundation, it may have supported a superstructure of maybe five meters in height, that's the estimate. Foundations were dug again through older layers, mainly street surfaces and associated layers of cultural accumulation which suggests a pre-gate road leading east-west and also a street surface extending to the south with pits and structural remains. So these were then buried under the medieval rampart. So what does the evidence mean for medieval Copenhagen? It seems that the area where these fortifications were placed was part of the urban area up until about 1372. In fact, the evidence suggests that it was quite a busy area from as early as the 1100s and that the activity extended further to the west with wells, pits and even a burial ground located outside of the area where the moat was then placed. Almost all of the activity in the west of the moat stopped when, once it was dug, and much of the former busy area was either dug away from the moat or buried under the rampart. So we, we tend to think the town's expanding, but in this case it seems that a decision was made to actually shrink the town slightly, at least in this area. Why this was done isn't clear, but there's a number of theories. Um, establishing the moat would have been a huge undertaking, given how big it is. So it may have been expedient to rearrange the urban space in order to reduce the length of the moat. It might have been decided to relocate peripheral activity and, and instead to relocate it within the town, um, so giving a sort of a more organized medieval city. Also, a more compact town with a reduced coastline may simply have been easier to defend. A further question raised by the new evidence is where the town's western defence was located prior to the 14th century, or in fact, was there one? There's this theory mentioned earlier of the horseshoe-shaped enclosure to the east, but the area we were digging was far outside of that. So in the years up to 1372, substantial parts of the urban area seem to have been undefended. Alternatively, an <coughs> undiscovered fortification lay further west, or a final possibility might be that there was an older, less substantial fortification in exactly the same place as we were digging, which the 1372 moat took away. But there's problems with that. Um, one main reason, if you were going to uh, enlarge an existing moat in that way, you would expect that you would push it out from the town, not back in towards the town. Plus, it doesn't explain why the activity outside of the moat seems to stop at around the same time. Um, it's worth remembering here that the first reference to the Western Gate in Copenhagen is in the 1370s, which supports the idea that that might be, in fact, the first gate. Um, 
but there is some problems as Kong is neutral. The other side of the city has defenses, it seems, from the 1200s. So. Um, it's also worth mentioning that there's an attack on the castle in Copenhagen by the Hanseatic League in 1369. So it could be that this new Western defense was rebuilt or created as a response to that. Um, as far as the evidence goes, there's not much indication that the fortifications by Westport changed very much from 1372 up until about 1500. That's just a shot of the road surface coming going west. And this is the oak beams in the base of the moat. There's a couple of versions of bridge going on here, so it's a little complicated, but... Um, yeah, there was a substantial rebuild of the bridge in 1500. That's the later bridge. This is from 1500. Very modern-ish. Um, we saw a lot of this structure and timber uprights associated with all the way to around 1500, so we're pretty good dating for that. Um, you can see it had big foundations of cut stones and a really serious superstructure. So it seems there was a lot of work going on around 1500 from what we saw to re-modernize the fences. Um, I'm going to skip some of this because we don't have time to carry. Um, yeah, a second gate was added outside of this area subsequently. So there's the inner gate at the top and then a new gate added to the south of this First, this uh, semicircular thing going on. Um, this is what I'm calling a demi lune, maybe wrong, but that's the, the name I found. And it seems to have been put there about 1530, but it doesn't seem to have lasted very long, and I speculate that it was too small to be functional. Um, it seems to have been replaced quite quickly, at least by the 1580s, with a new gate, uh, sorry, when the new gate was actually added. So at first, this was just without a gate. Um, the gate survived as foundations of huge boulders and the remains of a huge cut stone and brick facade that faced the southeast. Um, let's move on. That's the facade of the outer gate, which is about five meters, six meters tall there. Um, on top of the brick superstructure, yeah, it was a two, two more meters of brickwork. The excavation didn't provide much dating evidence for this structure, but we know from various references and from what we saw combined together that it must be somewhere between 1540s and 1580s. The moat associated with the gate was altered a number of times, and this is something I don't have time to get into, but we saw a lot of re reshaping of the moat going on a lot in the, in the late 1500s and the early 1600s. It's like they really weren't happy with what they were doing. Um, it was originally curved and extended towards the town from the outer gate, and then at some point its shape was adjusted to have a more angular profile, so more like a proper bastion. Um, sources suggest that it was in 1618 and 19 that, it, that these changes were made. But for sure, when the when the spine up, that's the bastion wall, sorry, which we also found some section of, and it's the later stuff. But um, yeah. Yeah, basically it seems that uh, it changed it into a bastion and then played around with it again and again and again. The western fortifications were replaced again in the 1660s with a completely new set of bastions constructed to the west. Relatively little of this was seen in our day, but uh, as it was mostly located outside of our area. By the 19th century, the traditional form of urban defence become basically obsolete and the defences in the area of the gate were removed as part of an opening up of the western boundary of Copenhagen, allowing the city to expand west and for the creation of the public square. Finally, air raid shelters in the 1940s, which we also saw, stretched the evidence for war and defence in this area to about 600 years. <laughs>